Hello everyone. Welcome to North Star Knife Reviews, episode five in our Scandinavian knife series. And today we start looking at the more classically designed knives. Going to take a look, or traditionally designed, maybe I should say. We're going to take a look at the Mora Classic series, or at least a few of them. Uh, these are the three Mora Classics that I have. Uh, these two are a few years old. This one is from this year, uh, 2021, as I'm recording this, 2022, when you'll see it, I guess. So this one is from 21. These are from, I want to say about 2018, maybe 2019 or so. Um, now, if you want to know a little about the history of Mora, you can go back and look at my first uh, episode in this series uh, when I looked at the Mora Basics. And I talked a little bit about the history, but knife makers have been making knives in the Mora area for 400 years at least. Um, and this style of knife has been around for over a hundred. Uh, they started making these with the wood handles. The wood was uh, originally scrap from making timber sleds. You know, the big sleds that they would go in, cut down trees, put those trees on and haul them out of the forest. Well, there'd be scrap wood left over and they used it for this. And originally that was birch wood. Uh, they started then using curly birch, which is a little more attractive, uh, got some you know, cool grain to it, um, but that quickly became more expensive because it's much harder to find. And so they then started going back to birch and that's when they started staining, uh, originally staining the handles red uh, to make them look sort of akin to mahogany uh, is what they were going for. Uh, eventually they stopped staining and started just painting them red. And that is what these two have. Uh, now with the new series, well, they've updated the classics, they've gone back to stain. Um, what I've got here, this is the classic number one. This is the classic number two. And this, oh, doesn't have a sticker on it. This is the classic one slash zero. Uh, this classic one, which we'll look at first, has been discontinued and replaced by this. Okay. Let's take a little look at this. Uh, I will say I don't like the sheaths on these. They really don't hold them that hard unless you really push it in. Um, so there's a little danger of them coming out. Uh, I would much prefer you know, a nice leather sheath, but this is what they sell it with. I suppose you can always pick up a leather sheath uh, aftermarket. Okay? So everybody knows what the plastic sheaths are like. We're not gonna spend any time on that. Um, this is the classic number one. Let's see, it is made of carbon steel. And the steel they use is UHB 20C, which is basically the equivalent of 1095. Uh, it's just a proprietary type of 1095. And, you know, like 1095, it gets a really nice edge. Doesn't hold it all that long, but it's very easy to sharpen up. These, of course, are Scandi grinds. Uh, on the number one, classic number one, you have a just under a four inch blade. And you can see there is no Ricasso uh, and no Troil. So that is all cutting edge. The total length on this knife is going to be right around, it's at an angle you can't really see uh, where it ends up, but it's about seven and three quarters of an inch. Okay. Has the traditional barrel shaped handle. Uh, feels pretty nice in hand. Wish it was just a little bigger, quite honestly. Um, got the stainless ferrule at the end. And these, of course, are partial tangs. Um, you know, these are all made by machine, the, the handles. Um, it's a really nice little knife that you could get uh, at one time a few years ago for about 15 to $20. You know, a little more than the basics online with the uh, Companion series. But it's got that very traditional look. Now, as I say, this number one has been discontinued. Um, we'll look at its replacement in just a second, but the number two is Similar, except larger. And I, this has a handle that fills my hand a bit more. Okay, let's, you, know, you can compare the number one and the number two right here. Um, the number two 
has a blade that is just a little bit over four inches, okay? And the total length is about eight and a quarter inches. So you're getting about a half inch, maybe a little more on this with maybe a quarter inch more on the blade. You know, not huge, but actually I would say there's a half inch on that blade, quite honestly. Um, you know, it's not a huge difference, but this also is a heavier and taller knife. See the, uh, might be a little bit thicker as well. There is also a number three that is a little bit bigger than this one. Uh, you can also get the two, I believe it is, with a little finger guard. Um, those are not as common, not as traditional, but you can do that. These handles are red painted. Now with the, uh, since they've discontinued the number one, they've come out with this one point zero, or one slash zero. You can see the sheath is a little different. Um, you know, it's a shiny rather than matte. Um, the biggest difference is it has a leather belt loop, which is gonna hold up a little better than this plastic. Still has the issue of does it hold it very tightly. Um, the one slash zero, uh, I thought was going to be the same size as the one, but it is smaller. And so now you've got this, and then you've got the jump up to this, which, uh, you know, I suppose this was close enough to the two that maybe it makes more sense to have a little bigger difference. But you can see the one slash zero is substantially smaller than the one. Instead of the almost four inch blade, you have a three inch blade. So there's an inch difference there, and you have about, not quite half an inch difference on the handle. So again, this is a bit small in my hand, as this was, uh, but this is smaller still on the handle. The other differences, this, hey, they've now gone back to staining the handle uh, because the stain is, I guess, a little more environmentally friendly than the paint that they were using. Uh, plus, I think it's gonna hold up a bit better. You know, paint on these does tend to flake off with use. Um, you can, and I think the stain is nice because you get um, more of the grain and some variations in color. So I, I prefer the stain, quite honestly. Um, you know, this isn't bad, but I really like this better. The other difference you can see, hopefully, the rat tail tang now comes all the way through and then is held in place with a little ring. Uh, a, a fairly traditional uh, style of holding. Um, some of the makers will peen the end into a little brass ring. This one just has the little ring pounded in. Um, so the tang length on the, these two is probably about the same. This may even have a little longer tang. Um, I don't have the updated Classic 2, so I don't know if the others also now have the full rat tail tang or if they end up somewhere in here. Um, I'm guessing that with all of them, since they've now started dyeing them, they also have made this change to all of the classic knives, but I don't know for sure. Anyway, some more classics. Uh, very traditional looking. They've been making this design for, again, over 100 years. Hope you like this look at it. Next time we will be moving into, uh, I think we're gonna take a look at a traditional looking martini, uh, if it comes tomorrow like it's supposed to, and then a couple smaller makers. Hope you like this, hope you found it interesting. You guys all have a good day, and I will catch you next time.